Yeah, the fanatic. But we keep it 100, keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina. Upstate, oh, yeah. it's yeah. yeah, the F A N A T T I C C. The fanatic where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call it. Welcome into the fanatic sports show for sports fans, by a sports fan. It's your boy, Coach I. All right, man, we in here for another college football preview, man. And it's been a while, man, but we talking Pitt Panthers again and got our guy J.J. Kitchen back at it. What's going on, J.J.? Nothing much, man. College football, I tell you what, it's been uh, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, especially this past week. It was good, so it's going to be good to see what, uh, what this week brings, man. That's right, man. Both Louisville and Pitt had the weekend. Also, you guys, fan bases, had – a whole Saturday to watch a lot of good football, a lot of crazy football. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is an ACC matchup. It's uh, the Atlantic versus the Coastal. But in the long game, uh, both teams need a victory here, uh, especially yesterday, North Carolina getting a win um, over Duke. Uh, Miami actually beat uh, some – who did Miami beat? I was surprised they actually won the game. Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. That's Virginia Tech. right. Back. Listen, my – Listen, the coastal has been kind of up and down, you know what I'm saying? Even though North Carolina doesn't have any losses in the in the ACC, I mean, in the coastal. But um, well, how are you feeling about the coastal overall? I'll tell you what. I, I think it's been, you know, you look at UNC. Uh, they, they've stepped up this year. Uh, their only loss coming to, you know, North Carolina, uh, coming to uh, Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Um, I think overall, just you know, the way I look at the coastal is just inconsistency. Um, you know, you look at Pitt. Uh, the, the loss to Georgia Tech was a really bad one. Or, uh, honestly, it was embarrassing. People, Some people think, well, is that the worst loss of the Narduzzi era? And I say, no, still Western Michigan. Western Michigan's a group of five school. Um, but the the problem with the Georgia Tech loss for them, for Pitt, is that it's an ACC loss. And right now with UNC not having any ACC losses, that's very <laughs> it's a big issue. Um, I think Pitt's got to really, in my opinion, really just run the table at this point because – they would need UNC to really slip up, and I just don't see where they do on their schedule. But you, know, you look at Miami, I think Miami was totally overrated coming into this season. Uh, losing the Middle Tennessee State, a big loss. Um, that's not good. Almost losing to Virginia Tech, uh, that's not good. Uh, you, just overall, I think it's it's been just inconsistent. And obviously, Virginia Tech and uh, Virginia Tech really coming through with uh, you know, Brent Pride being a complete uh, just rebuilding year. I think it's going to be a rebuilding year couple of years, two or three years. I was years. about to say, but, I think so too. <laughs> so, you know, the way I look at it, I think Mike Elko's done a good job with what he has down at Duke. You know, nobody really expected Duke to do anything. I think as the season progresses, he might sneak out a couple, two or three more wins. Um, I think Georgia Tech, I think they, they started off because they changed, you know, they changed coaches there. Yeah. I, I think they'll go back to what they were. They'll stay towards the bottom. But uh, at this point, I mean, I would say the favorite for the Coastal at this point is North Carolina. Yeah, I would say so too, man. Sometimes, uh, you know, in the last 10 years or so, I would say majority of the years, not all, but majority, that Coastal is kind of like anybody, nobody wants to win. It's like, let's go, let's win it. Right now, I think North Carolina definitely is in the driver's seat, um, but you guys still have to play North Carolina. Like I say, you still got to play Miami, who, you know, always either gives you a good game or has your number. Uh, I think you're right. I think Georgia Tech is kind of uh, living off of uh, win one for the Gipper, you know, player coach guy. A lot of, I don't think a lot of those guys actually want to play for, you know, Collins towards the end. So they kind of just happy he's gone. And yeah. uh, you guys caught him during that time. Plus your quarterback, you know, was, was hurt. So um, I think it's all up in the air. And if you guys can win out, of course, you handle you. You still control your own destiny. You know yeah. what I'm saying? As far as getting to the ACC championship, yeah, and I and that's really what it comes down to. What is Pitt going to do? And I and I think that one of the biggest things that I've talked about with a number of people is that it's just been inconsistent. I think it's been a number of things. Uh, I think Pitt's defense, obviously. I think you know you look at it from a perspective of okay, they faced Tennessee. They only gave 27 points. Uh, and regulation, which is phenomenal from what we saw yesterday from Alabama, giving up 52 points. That's great. But then you've seen portions of the year where, you know, they can't stop the run. Uh, overall, do I think the Pitt's defense is the issue? No. I, I think Pitt's defense has been what it what we, what we thought it was. It's not getting as much pressure as it usually does, uh, possibly because from what I've studied on tape, is that a lot of these teams are getting the ball out a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. Um, but the real problem with the team is, you know, Offensive line play consistently, whether it's missing blocks or 
you know, constantly missing assignments. Um, I think the wide receivers have been really underwhelming. Uh, Kanate Mumfield has done things that you know have been really good, but then he, he's just missing at times. Um, I would say the, the consistent wide receiver in the group is clearly Jared Wayne. Um, Bob Means has been absolutely absent. I think he's been an absolute fail this year uh, so far. You know, we saw the second half. Hopefully something changes. Um, I'd like to see where Jalen Barden is uh, getting uh, Gavin Bartholomew more involved. And, you know, is he a band of Canada is what we thought he was. He's, he's clearly a very good back um, NFL potential. He's going to be a first or second rounder for sure. Um, you know, the good thing is, is that Rodney Hammond will be back this week. Um, so you'll have that one, two punch, but, Again, it comes down to the passing game. I think that what you've seen over the past couple of years is you can't be one dimensional. And no. what I've seen from their offense, you know, you, you saw Keaton Slovis last year, even the first three years of his career at USC, be able to sling it around. And he showed that. But when you look at this offense this year, it's almost like he's being coached by Signetti to not make those to not make those mistakes. And I think it's really costing Pitt. And you know, you, you watch the Tennessee game. You saw a passing game that had 200 passing yards in the first half against Tennessee's defense. You know, just guys have been hurt, whether it's but guys have been hurt, not getting into rhythm. You've seen games where pick comes out and they're starting at their own 10. They get three and outs. And the same thing happened to Virginia Tech this, you know, two weekends ago. You know, where you see, a, you know, you, they come out, they're starting at their own three-yard line, and it's three and out because they've run three times in a row. Just, you know, I would say for at this point, I, I would put Pitt, I guess, as a run first offense but yeah we just don't know there's just not there's not been continuity they continually switch guys in at offensive line i know guys are hurt but you got to start sticking with the same five to get some type of gel uh you know preferably i like jake cradle at center i really do i think he's done a good job but um it, just a lot of just uncertainty on offense and special teams has to get better too again you know a block punt from last week um just constant mistakes you know, we're going to see what team comes out here in the second half because, if you know, in my opinion, if Pitt doesn't run the table, I don't see them going to the ACC championship game this year. Yeah, no, uh, that Louisville defense, uh, their strong point this season has been, you know, being strong against the run. You know, they're not – it's not like you can't run on them, but they're only giving up 133 yards a game, whereas in the air it's 227. I'm like you. I think if I had to pick out, you know, the people that's been consistent on Pitt's offense, it's, uh, when Keaton Slovis is playing, you know, I think he's doing yeah. pretty good. And a band of Kanda. I mean, every time I turn on, you know, I, I turn on the, the pit game, is is you know, he's making a play. Uh, like you say, those wide receivers, when they're playing good, they're playing good. But it's like sometimes they just go incognito on you a little bit. And I don't know if that's a, a result of the play calling or and, and the inconsistency of the play calling, I should say, or, or just getting used to a, a new guy at the helm, at, uh, you know, for your OC or whatever. So, yeah. Um, on the other side of the ball, you guys, like I said, you know, me and you talked about it in the uh, season preview, man, like your defense, that was, you know, I was thinking that was going to be you guys' calling card. You know what I mean? It's like D-line, you got got you got guys all along that D-line, man. You got linebackers and then Louisville's offense. We already know what Louisville's offense is. It's Malik Cunningham. You know, yeah. <laughs> he's there, Pretty you know. Dead. He's a passer and he's the leading rusher. So, how do you think uh, you guys are fair against uh, the one man show there? <laughs> I think you know, and and that's Louisville's problem is that they only have just the one guy. And you really saw that uh, this past weekend, or really the the weekend before, where um, Malik Cunningham sat out due to being in concussion protocol. Mm -hmm. When you look at their team, I, I think Pitt's going to do the same thing: is you know, be aggressive. They'll always be aggressive. They're always going to be able to. Their first, their first objective is to stop the run. I think they're going to do that. I think they're going to have Servassier Dennis be the spy for Malik Cunningham when they face him. Um, you know, the linebackers continually get better every week. Uh, and the one thing that's very noticeable is, you know, they are, I mean, the teams are getting the ball out faster. They're not throwing the deep ball. Uh, they're, you know, it's clear that they're having, you know, and, it's, and the people wonder why the sacks are down. You know, it truly is because it, they're getting the ball out quicker. Uh, yeah. I think Pitt's defense has been, you know, skeptical at times with stopping the run. You saw it a little bit against West Virginia. You saw it a little bit against Tennessee. And then this past, you know, against, you know, Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech, it was really the second half and when they, they really turned it on. If they can fix that, I think their defense is exactly what we thought it was. You've got Kalaja Kansi in the middle. Um, you know, hopefully Baldonado comes back healthy. Deslin Alexander comes back healthy. This week off is really going to tell us a lot about what this defense really looks like at full health and you know i think you know 
overall, I think that their defense is going to play well. Uh, I think they're really going to do a good job of holding Louisville to low points. I would say no more than 14 to 17 points, in my opinion. I think because just if, if Louisville had a couple extra guys to where it wasn't just Malik Cunningham, we're talking about a different story. But yeah, because he's that di- he's that dynamic. Yeah, but I'm, I'm with you. You know, I'm with you. They don't have anything to go with them, really. Yeah, it'd be different if you, if you were able to look at somebody else in the offense and they're not just totally focused on Malik Cunningham. But I think for most of the time, you look at you know every team that's faced Louisville, you know, that's really what, what they're focused on is, is Malik Cunningham. And that's a shame because I think he's a tremendous talent. But I think from what I've been hearing, I think there might be an opening there at Louisville if he continues to slide. Yeah, and I mean, he lost his biggest weapon from last year, Harold, who is at – Actually, he's on Alabama's roster. He hasn't played yet, though. He's been hurt the whole year, and it's almost yeah. like, you know, I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but it had he still had Harold, that offense would look a lot different. You know what I'm saying? So let's talk about predictions and what you think the keys to the game would be uh, as far as Pitt's offense is concerned, because I think the keys to the game on defense, obviously, is to contain Malik Cunningham. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we kind of talked about this beforehand, uh, and we <laughs> – Kind of looking at it like, you know, Vegas has this game as pretty much a pick em, but, you know, uh, Pitt's on the road at Louisville, and Pitt is a one-point underdog, you know, from what we saw on in Vegas Insider. So what do you think the keys to that offense is going to be this week? So I think um, clearly from what they've shown is, one, uh, it doesn't matter that the turnover battle is always number one. When Pitt wins the turnover battle, they're successful. It's, it's that simple. Don't make dumb mistakes, whether it's through the passing game or uh, you, know, you know, fumbles where you know Georgia Tech mm-hmm. was really the, the tail of the game. You know, just dumb mistakes and you know, and fumbles. As long as they don't turn the ball over, they're going to be fine. Number two, really, just go back to establish the run game. You'll have um, Israel Banacanda, Obviously, you know, you'll have him there. But then we should we should have from everything I've heard is that Rodney Hammond should be back. Um, okay. But number three, really, just try to try to get the passing game uh, to where it's sufficient. It doesn't need to be what like Kenny Pickett had whenever he was here. At least push the ball down the field a little bit because if you're not able to establish the passing game, you're allowing the team, especially Louisville or any team that Pitt's going to face, by putting nine in the box, and I don't care who you're facing, you're going to have a hard time running the football. So That's facts. Let Keaton Slovis do what he did when he was at USC. Allow him to, to really scope the field, push the ball downfield. Don't let him be nervous. Go out there, play. You no, know, Don't be timid because once you're timid, automatically the guy's going to play down to the competition, to put it lightly. Let the kid play, push the ball, find out what we have at wide receiver. And I think that really, you know, I you know, I hope to see, you know, as another key, you know, not just Izzy and Rodney, but Bartholomew, Jared Wayne, and I would like to see Kanate Mumfield and Jalen Bradley get involved, start getting these guys involved and start getting the ball to your playmakers. There it is. And you told me, you know, earlier, like, you know, you guys are good on the road, so that's actually good. I mean, it's not like Papa John's Cardinal Stadium is a huge venue, but it is, uh, you know, they packed the house, 55-plus thousand. Um, of course, on the other side of the ball, like I say, you know, it's just about containing Malik Cunningham. Now, if they have somebody come out and step up, then that'll be a shock to a, a lot of people, including us, too. You know, but I, would be I think you – yeah, but you guys have the defense to do it. This is like I say, you guys are one point underdog. I looked over under is fifty six and a half, which tells me Vegas is thinking this is more like a thirty twenty six game type deal. Uh, okay, I guess you know I could see that. Um, I honestly think Pitt's the better team, top to bottom. Uh, which Pitt team is going to show up? Yet to be That's seen. The question. That's the question. So if we're giving out predictions, man, I am going to say Pitt's going to win this game. Um, I think it is going to be close just because, like you say, the, the offense has kind of been up and down roller coaster. I'm thinking more like a 28-21 pit. Yeah, I think it's a good prediction. And, and I think I think it's going to be close because, one, I've seen this team come out after a bye week and absolutely lay an egg. But I've also seen this team come out after a bye week and just turn the Jets on. So, you know, to be safe, I'm going to call it a close game. Um, I'm going to mark it. Just because of Louisville's defense, they're able to. They've been they've been trying to stop the run, and they've been doing a decent job at it. Um, I think that just with the week off, guys healthy, um, really an emphasis on what's there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 28-21. That's what I'm gonna do. I think until I see a, a proven effort where it's consistent, because you saw last week they scored you know 45 points against Virginia Tech. 
Um, I, I just need I need to see consistency. You just you just don't yeah. know what this team's going to provide. You know, week in week out, you, you see the first two games where man, they're just they're, they're lighting it up, they're lighting it up, and then you see just they you know they lay an, they lay an egg. So yeah, if Pitt can come out and really establish the run game, really define the game, and then really open it up through the air. I think this game can really go their way really quickly, but we'll see overall what they can do. But I'll go 28-21. Yeah, man, we got kind of, like I say, the same prediction. I'm, I'm with you, man. At the beginning of the season, I was like, okay, this is Pitt's, uh, you know, division to lose. Yeah. I knew USC would be able to score, but they can't really stop anybody. I think everybody's offense looks good against UNC. But yeah, they can't stop anybody. Yeah, so uh, if you guys can get through the day, you know, I think you're a better team than Miami, even though some, you know, like I say, I just think you guys control your own destiny, like I said earlier, and it's up to those guys to get it done, man. Hey, man, we appreciate having JJ back up in the fan at it, man. Like I say, it's been a while, man. We had told y'all JJ was going to be doing more stuff with the podcast. So, JJ, tell them where they can find you now, man. Yeah, man. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at JJ underscore Kitchen 40. Um, really post all of my stuff there. I do a little bit of work with uh, FQ Pit, um, but yeah, that's the best place to find me. And then uh, I think after the new year, I might have a little bit of a surprise for everybody uh, starting up uh, my own podcast here. So we'll see. But uh, appreciate you, Coach, for you know all the advice and just the the mentorship, especially to you, Jonathan, everybody. Lucky to have you guys, and uh, always good to be here and talk Pit football, man. It's always good. That's right, man. Y'all make sure to check him out on Twitter. He uh, makes guest appearances as well. Uh, he's uh, was a coast to coast football. Uh, you got you been on there, and so uh, really knowledgeable about Pitt. So you want to talk some Pitt football, man? JJ is the guy, man. So for JJ, man, this is Coach I, the fan at it. Y'all get in the comments, put your score predictions, what you think the keys to the game will be, and if we got anything wrong or right. All right, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Fan at we out of here. Got it jumping like it's that valley. Yeah. I call yeah. my dogs out the pound. Let's go eat. Turn on the fan at it. Yeah. Let's have a debate. Yeah. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?